Hello, hello. Welcome to episode 70 of the Lore Through, and today we will be taking a quick look at the shamans and the followers of the Ancestor Cult. So let's take our time and get over here. I wanted to show off the shaman. She is here. She is singing. She has blue, a blue aura effect. She is holding aloft a skull of some kind. And we usually associate blue in Souls games and in Elden Ring with intelligence, the academy, sorcerers, intellect, that sort of thing. But they aren't learned in the way that we would suspect them of being learned, like those at the academy studying books being eggheads. It seems that they have their own sort of means of becoming, of acquiring knowledge, right? So we took, take a look at her. She's got these moose-like antlers with these little glowy bits on it. We'll take a closer look at the head item uh, once we, in just a little bit. We can see on the dwelling arrows that they do magic damage, and that's the arrow used by the Ancestor Follower Warriors. So they do have a means of dealing with magic, right? They have a knowledge and a wisdom beyond that of the academy not surpassing it but uh parallel to it accomplishing many of the same things through a more naturalist expression in the world which is curious because it's completely counter to what we would suspect we would try to treat it like a religion or a faith right it should be faith scaling but no it has to deal with uh their own knowledge grounded as it is in nature so we see this uh the warriors over there right they have their own horns, and if we get close enough here, we should see, there it is, a blue aura around the warrior. So he seems to be absorbing some sort of life force or energy from the chant that the shaman is doing, right? So we can see the shaman's doing it, big ol' aura, the warrior nearby, he is imbued with his own little blue aura, and if we look at in the far distance, we see another shaman chanting, and we see more warriors stomping along. Let's see if we can get a better angle here. And if we look at the horns of the regular warriors versus the horns on these fellows in the distance, right, we see that their horns are glowing, unlike the ones who are nearby, right? And it seems that the major difference is not the, the range, between them and the sh their shaman, but rather that they are participating in whatever ritualistic dance is going on. So let's get up here, and we can show off uh, the lady. Take care of that guy. And it seems interesting. The warriors are very aggressive, and they're quick to anger, and they seem less spiritual, at least at a glance, right? Meanwhile, as we get closer to the shaman, we have to get very close before she notices us that she seems a little slower to anger but she is larger she has a bigger health pool and she is a lot harder to stumble than the warriors right and i'll show it off later but she's cradling the skull and she is willing to slap you with her free hand while still cradling the skull as it is something important to her and their ritualistic rites grab these really fast and let's make our way up and around. Because that's the order I decided on the roadmap, so gall darn it, we're going to follow it. But getting a little closer, yep, we can see that there are many warriors around that shaman, and their horns are glowing, and they are being infused with this naturalist magic. The intelligence of common sense. Which, to be fair, wizards don't seem to exert much in the realm of common sense. They're kind of doing science for science's sake. Not to live in harmony with nature or some such. Still interesting to me that it is characterized by its own flavor of intelligence as opposed to being one of the many, many cults inspired by the faith stat of this world. Let's pull out the Radon bow and give him the good old rain of arrows. Oh, it does so much damage. And you can do it from a distance. And if an enemy is running away from you, like another player, and you lock on right before they go around the corner, your lock on will linger for a couple seconds, and you can hit them around the corner. If they stand still around the corner, that is. If they keep running, they're fine. Oh, shining horned headband. All right, so let's uh, toy with one of these fellows for a moment. He's got the big old moose antler weapon that you can't farm off of these guys, and there's good reason for that. 
It is a set drop. Well, not really a set drop. You have to get it from a uh, boss soul later on. But the horns don't seem to be fading in their potency, even though we're giving him plenty of time to lose the potency in his horns, the glow. And let's just finish him off. There we go. And sure enough, in a couple seconds, his horns fade. It's such a cute little detail. You would completely miss it unless you were paying a special attention, which we are supposed to during this playthrough be paying a special attention to everything. And we're going to come around the back here and keep going. And we'll continue as we are behind these ruins until we get up this cliff here by this tree or what's left of a tree. Well... It's shaped vaguely like a tree, but it's a pillar, right? But it looks to be made of stone. Uh, that could be wood. Just a different sort of wood that I'm used to. Okay. I believe there's an item up here. There it is. Okay. But all the way up here in the ruin. So we're over here. So we traveled across through the back and up and around. We find a nobleman. With the modeled necklace plus one. Arguably, arguably your favorite item when it comes to resisting statuses. Because you throw it on and it does a little bit for everything. And it's the upgrade version of the do a little bit for everything. So why not? Alright, one moment. I forgot to pull up my map when I switched everything around. There we are. Okay. So now that we've looted that, we are safe to head over in uh, this direction, <clears throat> essentially. So we're just clearing out the area. Uh, I guess I could take a moment and read some item descriptions. We did fight a shaman as well as a uh, regular ancestor follower. So the shamans are wearing the shining horned headband. Headband decorated by a pair of shining horns, worn by ancestral follower shamans. Horns with buds that also shine are ideal ceremonial items for ancestral worship. Strengthens ancestral infant's head. We're not sure what that is, but it's probably the skulls that are holding. Ancestral followers keep their distance from the earth tree, awaiting new buds. They are certain to sprout from their very flesh and indeed their souls. Let's see. Shaman first. The ancestral followers live a distant from uh, live a distance from the earth tree, awaiting new buds. They are certain to sprout from their very flesh, and indeed their souls. So, not a whole lot on that front. Yeah, I think we get a little more information from some of their weapons. So let's take a look at that, because it is. They are a curious culture, right? They seem old and wizened, but we will see if that holds true. So looking to weapons, they have a great hammer. So huge thick horn carved with tree ring like markings adapted into a bludgeoning weapon wielded by ancestral follower warriors the ancient horn is imbued with the power of ancestral spirits a small amount of hp is restored upon defeating an enemy and then they also have the jawbone axe axe made from an herbivore skull weapon of the ancestral followers who disdain metal this axe is more of a bludgeon it forgoes a bladed edge instead using the beast's molar teeth the buffet foes dealing strike damage but there's something a little odd about them eschewing metal is that when we look at the shining horned headband in particular um, that's not the one I wanted there we go I wanted the lighting maybe it's a little too much hard to see 
The reason I'm zooming in terribly close upon this character's face is I would like for you to see the little hangy bits. They look like little discs of metal, don't they? Kind of reminiscent of the Erdtree and its boughs, despite their abhorrence for the thing. And metal, they are supposed to eschew metal. Do the shamans not eschew metal while the warriors... Sorry. Do the shamans embrace metal while the warriors do not? Or perhaps are these little droplets of silver tear? Hard to say. I couldn't tell ya. But if it is droplets of silver tear, and silver tear are creatures that are, for all intents and purposes, alive in this universe, then maybe they are seen as organic, despite, you know, basically being a metal. Very strange. Very strange indeed. But, uh, it's hard to know how old the ancestor follower culture is. Mostly because they don't seem to leave much behind. They hang out around the ruins of other cultures. And while it seems they have their own tenets and beliefs, of course. Somber 5. It, uh... Is one of those odd things where we don't have much to date them. I've heard some theories where some people theorize that the, uh... Ancestor followers share a lot in common with the Amish community of our own world. But yeah, so the it seems that the ancestral followers, to a degree, seem to be uh, with nary an exception, possibly a community that has recently adopted a more naturalistic state of life, a sort of rejection of modern society, understandably enough. It's been a while since I fought one of these boys. There we go. But yeah. Red Wolf of Radigan, now a regular enemy out in the world. Stop off. We find another brazier back here. And we'll probably grab a weapon that's a little better at chasing. I guess the poison's not going to do much against them, huh? Use the halberd. Alright, get our flasks back. Not that we're missing a whole lot. Okay. Next up on the docket, if we can get through this episode without more interruptions. I keep having noise issues in the area. Which is a shame, because I'd like to record and not be just grating on the audience for any particular reason. Alright, so I believe we need a loot over here. There is a beetle. I actually want to show off this ash for. There's a couple more ashes of ore I need to show off. Enchanted shot. Easily overlooked. Could be a very good addition to your build. We will see. So, they can use the ancestral head that they're holding to create that life-sapping magic fire, whatever you want to call it, and they're cradling it, right? They're bigger, they're tougher, they're harder to stumble than the warriors, but they don't seem nearly as prone to violence. Now, they're still going to defend themselves, right? 
but they do so with these big meaty swings they don't have a weapon and they will continually carry see look at that just decked me nascent butterfly didn't know they carried those Are you a true wizard yet? I'm curious. I did not turn enough. That's on me. Bad inputs. Alright. So we have enchanted shot, which I do want to stick on this bow. We're going to go to this little side area and then put it on and see how it performs. Because I'm pretty certain I've used mighty shot before. Which is just kind of like a charge shot for the bow. Uh, flies pretty pretty fast, does decent damage if you hit somebody. Uh, they'll notice. They'll notice. It's not a tickle by any means. It's a good way to get damage out of a bow. Uh, bows are kind of negligible in PvP in a lot of situations unless you're using barrage at a medium range with a status like sleep arrows. People do it. And those people are usually annoying because they always couple it with light roll. So you can, you know they're the scum of the earth. There's not much in this game that I turn my nose up at in terms of uh, what mechanics you can use in PvP. But light roll is probably the one, if I were to say. Simply because it's faster than sprinting and you can't chase them. And it just turns any conflict into a bore. Oh, it has a stumble, it seems. There we are. And now we can see what she was guarding. The Ancestral Infant's Head. Which is, unlike most of our repertoire of spells and things, it's a reusable item. We've only got, like, the Wraith Color Bell, which is the other one, right? But hey, it scales with intelligence. A scaling. <clears throat> I didn't mean to unequip that. Skull of a very young ancestral spirit. Just think how many sproutings it might bear. Uses FP to spray a spirit vapor inflicting magic damage. The vapor becomes a temporary geyser which deals continuous damage to everything it touches until it disappears. Alright, moving forward. On one thing while I'm thinking about it. Okay, good. <clears throat> Excuse me. I had a little bit of OBS trouble this morning while I was recording, which is kind of funny. For some reason, one of the audio channels that I designated died outright. Just, it won't record a darn thing. And I had a hotkey to mute it. Uh, to mute the voice audio channel, should I need to clear my throat or something during the recording, and to do so quietly without having to do extensive editing after the fact. Kind of like editing on the go. And for some reason, OBS broke, and I don't know enough about the program, it seems, because I can't, like, I can see the bar for the at audio channel, but it doesn't light up when I speak, because it's meant to capture my voice. And I can still mute it which is weird enough, but I can't find any of the settings to delete it because it seems that I need to create a new audio channel just to get everything going. So very odd. OBS had an update and, uh, yeah, I can't find a certain aspect of it anymore. All right. I remember now. I think we've lit up almost all the brazers. I'm going to get on torrent and we're going to go look. Because we got the one back here. Fairly certain we lit it up. Yeah, we got that one. We got the one behind the tree. I'm fairly certain we got the one by... Well, maybe we didn't get grab this one. Maybe I was too busy fighting stuff. No, no. I, actually, there it is. <laughs> Look at that arrow right through my neck. Ooh. There we go. But we're going to head back to the Grace. We're going to apply that new uh, Ash of War we got for bows. 
And we're going to see how it works. Sure enough. And we should have enough time. Let's see. Two earlier clips are like six minutes a pop. So we have, what, 18 minutes? 10 minutes left? That makes sense. Uh, I sat down way too fast and didn't apply it. Goodness me, how do you put up with all of my shenanigans? All of my scattered brain Alzheimer moments. Okay, Ash of War, and we are putting on Enchanted Shot. So this is what I wanted to show off. And sure enough, I believe it has really high range too. Yep. And it might be a little hard to see for enemies that are running straight at me. But it curves normally. Interesting how if we hit her, everyone else in the area responds. See, normal arrows, they kind of have a set track. But Enchanted, it curves. Very good while she's backtracking along the path, actually. And it's not too expensive. I think this should be a kit I should try out in PvP when somebody's running. Because, honestly, it's, it's a homing bolt. And this is, uh, I don't know if there's lore behind it. I'll take a look. Let's see. Archery skill that enlivens the arrow with which, uh, sorry, with spiritual essence. The resulting shot will fly faster. This guy's smacking me. There we go. Back to the bow description. Uh... The resulting shot will fly faster than regular shots and change its trajectory to follow the target. Imbues arrow fired with magic damage, reveals its true worth when used with magic infused arrows. And sure enough, we were hitting for a good amount at a good range, too. Um, I feel like if you can lock on. Now, let's try it not locked on, because I'm curious now. Huh. It still kind of arcs like a normal arrow. But it seems to fly really far for a normal arrow. We'll give it a shot. We will shoot a regular style arrow, not a charged one. It still hits, but it doesn't fly nearly as straight. And I'm sure uh, the use of the arrow talisman would boost that phenomenally. Okay, so we have things to get to now. Well, we always had things to get to, but... Best not dally or dither about. Probably using those words wrong. Okay. What to use? What to use? Well, I suppose I have a moment to get past everything. So yeah, if you ever wondered why uh, the Ancestral Follower archers never seem to miss, they're using Enchanted Shot. Now their Enchanted Shot creates bigger, more devastating arrows than ours does, and they can use it at much farther range, but we still get a small version of it, and I think it's quite good. It has uses. I was sleeping on it, and I really want to test it out in PvP scenario as a finisher for somebody running away who might otherwise be very good at dodging or strafing arrows. Alright, what should we use for this fight? I'm tempted to use... The Star Scourge Boy. Oh, we're still at a medium load? That's incredible. Alright. Sure. Why not? I don't think I'll have a use for a lot of these, but... It'll be fun nonetheless. Uh, a new Spirit Ash. Let's try the Elmander X. Why not? Let's see if we uh, regret it entirely. But this fight, similar to the other fight that we had, is going to be a tad different. That was a good chunk of damage. And now he's going to spray that gas all over the place. Uh, the Albanurk's not too smart. But see how he collapsed? He pops up over there. He seems to pop out of something. Like a cartoonish growing effect out of a... Like he's being pushed through a hole that he's too small for, and he just stretches because he's cartoonish. I'm 
try and pace this fight because I want to show off some of the things. Wow, that was sad. Spray is magic thereabouts. Yeah, it seems to hit really well. It's like the high accuracy Ash of War for bows. Alright, come on. Go heal. I know you're gonna want it. Don't make me tick you again. The Albanurks are just here for moral support. 58. <laughs> okay, so there he's healing. But he seems to have two methods, or he has a teleport and a heal. Is he teleporting away now? I think he is. And I think he's popping out of a small creature? I don't know. Zoe the Witch has a video on the Regal Ancestor Spirit. I recommend you look it up. It shows more eloquent, or shows better than I can that every time the Ancestor Spirit does its little teleport, it eats up a little body in the arena of one of these ghost spirits that you see hanging about. And depending on which one it pops out of, it gets a new ability. So that one, it must have come out of one of those jackrabbit-looking creatures. The squirrel, jackrabbit, whatevers. And it gets that hop as a result. Yeah, it looks like it pops out of one. I wasn't very close to it. And I think that was a ram noise. So I'm curious if it'll do a ram attack if given enough time. A charging attack. Maybe it was a boar. Maybe it used a boar, actually. Because it gets different attacks depending on which one it absorbs. Whew. Okay. So... Neat fight. I really like it. The music is wonderful. That was such a huge chunk of damage. There we go. Still... A rather neat fight. Thank you, Radon Scourge Swords. You're awkward and cumbersome to use, but I like you anyways. And we get the Regal Ancestor Spirit. It dropped a Remembrance. Which is very uncharacteristic of uh, bosses that... Well, we just don't see very often with bosses, I should say. It seems to be a Shardbearer thing as far as we've seen in the game thus far. And I keep probably skipping it by... No, wait. It's one you can eat, so it's got to be in the use items. There it is. Remembrance of the Regal Ancestor Spirit hewn into the Erd Tree. The power of its namesake can be unlocked by the Finger Reader. Alternatively, it can be used to gain a great bounty of runes. Ancestral spirits exist as a phenomenon beyond the purview of the Erd Tree. Life sprouts from death, as does from birth. Such is the way of the living. It's kind of interesting how much it uh, seems to want to exist beyond the Erd Tree. The Ancestor Follower items insist upon that. The Regal Ancestor items insist upon that. Yet, when we look at the fallen body of the Ancestor Spirit, uh, the one outside, I'll take another look at it real quick. Uh, it very much resembles a tree. I mean, just look at it. It's budding. And it's not just budding new horn, it's budding leaves. Look at that. So it seems that they found an alternate way of having their own crazy rampant life forces. Very reminiscent of the Crucible and its budding outward life. Maybe a little bit more orderly, despite being uncultured or uncivilized as we may see it. Alright. Let's head to the round table hold 
and see what that remembrance gets us really fast. And then I think that'll be a good point to cut the episode. Next time, episode 71, we will still be there, but we will investigate Necron briefly, as well as the aqueduct over here, which we didn't get to. So come in here, we'll speak to Enya. Ah, and receive power from Remembrance. So now we can see that we can get the Winged Great Horn, which is, I believe, primarily a strength weapon, but I think it's quality as well. I think its dex goes up a good amount as well. And then the Ancestral Spirits Horn. Winged Great Horn. Distinctive horn suffused with the power of ancestral spirits. This large wing shaped specimen is wielded as a weapon of uh, spirit worship. In the ancestral spirit worshiping faith, these are considered envoys wings, made to reap the lives of beings which experience no sprouting. So I guess to them it's like a scythe for a grim reaper. And then we have the ancestral spirit horn. A number of new growths bud from the antler-like horns of the fallen king, each glowing with light. Thus does new life grow from death, and from death one obtains power. So this item restores your mana upon defeating enemies. You get like three or four points. It's not a whole lot, but it adds up, especially over an area, right? If you combine this with the sacrificial axe that we got earlier on your hip, you'll be getting like seven mana per kill, which is quite noticeable. There's another weapon that does it as well, so you could, in theory, combine all three, but you'd have a very interesting build. But still, it's a very good item. I like this a lot. <laughs> I, I use it when uh, doing PvE with friends of mine, just to keep my mana pools up. Because when you have it, and you're constantly getting mana from everything you're killing, even in small amounts, you can afford to blow your abilities more often without wasting flasks, and you can save the flasks for your invaders. In fact, I'm going to pick that up right now. Now, go forth. Let the words of the fingers guide you. All right. Well, thank you for joining me today for episode 70. We'll get back to it next time for episode 71, and hopefully I'll have my OBS issues sorted. That would be nice. But hey, it's all a part of the learning experience. I'll see you later, and enjoy your day. Bye-bye.